ان الحمد لله احمده واستعينه واستغفره واستهديه واعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوة الخلق وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم has said in an authentic hadith أثقل ما يأتي في ميزان العبد يوم القيامة حسن الخلق that the heaviest thing that comes on the scale of a servant a scale of a human in the day of judgment is the good characters and good manners and he صلى الله عليه وسلم spoke about حسن الخلق in good, good characters and good manners in, in, in many a hadith and it is also in, 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 in many of the ayat in the Quran. But one of the things that perhaps we forget about Husn al khuluq is that <clears throat> is, is, is one of the important things in that aspect in which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the best of among the, best, the, 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 the people of Husn al khuluq are those who treat their wives the best. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خياركم خياركم لأهله وأنا خيركم لأهلي The best among you are those who treat their wives the best. And I am the best of you in treating my wife. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in, in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, in an authentic hadith, أكمل الناس إيمانا أحسنهم أخلاقا وخيار الناس that the, 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 the people with most complete level of Iman are those who have the highest level of good characters and manners. And the ones who are the best of these are those who treat their wives with the best good characters and manners. And one of the things that perhaps someone may ask the, uh, about is, why, he's, why did he sallallahu alayhi wasallam choose to pick the wives from among all the other people? And brothers and sisters, think about it for a moment. If someone pretend to have a good characters and manners, that could stay for some period of time. You, you, meet, you, you meet with your friends, you meet with people in your meetings or in your gatherings, and you can adjust yourself in a way that it shows you in front of them as a great person. But if that was not something in your own character, if that was something that you pretend and not something that you exactly are, then you cannot stay like this for a long time. Because you stay with your wife 24-7, because you have your wife all the time, now being with great characters and manners all the time, that is a proof and witness. That's an evidence that really, indeed, you possess these good characters and manners. That's where, that's where exactly people who are truthful who from inside and from outside that when they show their good characters and manners with their wives all the time then indeed regardless of whom they meet with they will show the same thing brothers and sisters i want to spend some time talking about about him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how he sallallahu alaihi wasallam had his relationship with his wives and i want to start with khadija radiyallahu anha Especially in that hadith that was reported in the, in, 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 in the Sahih, in Sahih al-Bukhari, 
in Kitab al Wahi, when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to go to that cave and, and then the revelation started. We everyone knows the hadith when he after the after this incident happened, the first time that he met with the angel Jib, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam, he immediately sallallahu alayhi wasallam went back to his wife Khadija. Brothers and sisters, think about it for a moment. If a person of us, if a man of us has a calamity, faces a trial, faces something major or big, where would he go at the beginning? He would maybe go to a lawyer, or maybe he would go to a very strong person to back him up. But he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it shows only his wife Khadija, as opposed to anyone else there. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time was a sadiq al amin He was the most trustworthy person. Everyone loved him. But he did not go to anyone but to his wife. Because his wife was his real support. That was the true relationship between him and Khadija radiallahu anha. When he went there and he talked to her and he told her what happened, she made her clear statement when she said, I swear by Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. For Verney, you are a person who always keep a great relationship with your relatives, with your kith and kings. You are a person who always help people who, who, who went into stress, who went into calamities. You are a person who is always generous with your, with your guests. You are a person who you always find people who have, been <clears throat> who have been going through calamities to help them. If you see this relationship, this mutual relationship, how she looks at him and how he looks at her sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and radiallahu anha wa ardaha. That was the relationship between a man and a wife. Between a real, a real believer sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his own wife. Brothers and sisters, in an authentic hadith he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Khadija radiallahu anha. Inni ruziqtu hubbaha. That the, the love of her has been, has been provisioned to me, just like how, I, how, how food and money have been provisioned to me. It's in his deep heart, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When she passed away, he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, would keep remembering her at every moment, at every day, to the extent that he would buy, when, when he gets meat or when he gets something sweet, he would send to her own friends to Khadija's friends after her death. Because he would say, I know that those friends of Khadija loved her. And I want to be good to her friends after her death. Brothers and sisters, the type of relationship that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had with, the, with his wife, with the, the type of relationship that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum had with their wives, was the reason that they got a, the best generation after them was the reason to get someone like Fatima alayha, alayha, radiallahu anha wa ardaha. was the reason to get people like Abdullah ibn Abbas like Abdullah ibn Umar like, like Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As all of these the great companions the best generation came because they had the best parents with the best relationship between them Brothers and sisters, we always speak about good characters and manners. We always show this with, with, with people, with friends, and maybe in the masjid or in other, in, in, in other gatherings, or maybe at work. But when it comes at home in particular, that's when everything turns back. That's when everything changes. Brothers and sisters, indeed, and from an Islamic perspective, if you do not have this good characters and manners at home, then don't ever think that you have it at all. Brothers and sisters, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam in one time went back to his home. 
And he was too hungry. And he asked for something to eat. And all what his wife was able to offer was this piece of bread that was very old, dried, not even suitable for eat, not eatable. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked at that. Just imagine yourself coming back from work only to find that your wife failed to cook a good food for you or maybe cooked but was not the best one for you. What would your behavior be? Now he sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he saw this he asked do you have anything that anything that I can dip this this piece of bread with? We call it idam. And she brought him vinegar. Just imagine bread with vinegar. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam dipped that piece of bread in that vinegar and he started to eat that. Guess what he was saying? He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Ni'mal idamul khal. What could be better as a dipping sauce than a vinegar? Guess what her feeling was? She saw him sallallahu alayhi wasallam coming so hungry, so tired. She could not help him. But he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would not even show her any sign of sadness or madness or anger. Rather, he taught her how to be always delighted, even with a little thing like a piece of bread and a vinegar. Not only that, he taught us, inshallah, to the time we, we meet Allah Azza wa Jal about the virtue and the goodness of having vinegar as a dipping sauce. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that really makes this relationship between a wife and a husband a great and as it should be is to look at what really connects you with your wife. You know, most of the time when people get married, it's either because maybe there has been uh, a previous uh, relationship between the families, maybe a relative, maybe some good friendship between the families, or maybe he found this uh, lady to be uh, maybe to match some of his criteria, regardless of what the reason is. But most of the time, most of the time, the, the bond between a man and a wife, between a husband and a wife, is based on a, a dunya criteria, based on something more materialistic. And once that materialistic thing is lost, the relationship is broken. If someone gets married to a lady because she is beautiful, once, she, once he has her and he, is, he got used to her, and that's it, she is no more enticing to him, that's it. Any problem that happens after that will break the relationship. If someone gets, it, gets her because of money, because of his status, because of whatever the relationship, whenever this thing, whenever this materialistic thing goes away, then there is no bond and the whole family will break. Brothers and sisters, the thing that really kept the relationship between our pious predecessors was that, that the love that they had was not only love because because what the wife and husband have between each another, but more and rather was because of the love for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, think about it. We always say, I love you for the sake of Allah. Yes, we say this to our friends. Do we say this to our wives? Have we ever thought about this in terms of our wives? Brothers and sisters, when you think about some righteous good deed that you want to do, maybe memorize Quran, maybe you want to study religion, maybe you want to do zakat or maybe sadaqa or do some, some, some good project, who do you think you want to do this with? Unfortunately, the last person that we think about doing this with is our spouses. We always tend to, f to forget about our spouses, our wives and our husbands. And we go and we rather choose to be with our friends. 
thinking well la samahallah that as if that the love for the sake of allah only happens between the friends brothers and sisters the most important love for the sake of allah that you could ever have is with your wife brothers and sisters if you have that if you think of your wife as a reason for you on the path of jannah as a helper supporter for you in the path of jannah if you think of your wife in this way that's when you have the the real love the real passion between you and your and your wife brothers and sisters aisha radiallahu anha when you when she used to describe him sallallahu alaihi wasallam she would cry she would cry because of how she saw him as the best person in in front of her that led her to the path of jannah when he sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted khadija she was his big supporter in the for the sake of da'wah brothers and sisters when khadija radiyallahu anha passed away he sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the 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 the, the, the saddest time in his life it was called the year of sadness when his uncle and his wife passed away both in the same year because his wife was his biggest supporter in the path of da'wah she was the one that she she would take all the burden on from him and just fill him with energy and fill him with with support to continue in his path sallallahu alaihi wasallam brothers and sisters unless we can have this relationship with our wives then all what we claim to have as good characters and manners will fall apart brothers and sisters it's 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 very crucial that we should look at this in a in a in a very <clears throat> in a very deep manner because you know what if you cannot establish this relationship with your wife then don't ever expect that your children will be pious as allah as a rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted them to be as a sahaba radiyallahu anhum had their children your children will see you as an example your children will see how the husband treat his wife will see how the father treats the mother and that would be the thing that will keep in their memory all the time when they get married they will repeat the same thing brothers and sisters i i repeat this relationship between wife and a husband is the most important thing to be looked at when it comes to husn al khuluq good characters and good manners اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم الجليل لي ولكم فاستغفروا وتوبوا الحمد لله على احساني وشكر له على توفيقي وامتناني واشهد ان لا اله الا الله تعظيما لشاني واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله دع الى رضوانه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه brothers and sisters let me give some tips inshallah on how we can improve how we can change this relationship that we have with our wives brothers and sisters you stay at your work maybe for 8 hours maybe less or more have you ever thought about calling your wife not to ask her about the food whether it is ready or not not to ask her about children whether they got back from school or not not to ask her about a repair that you want at home but rather to say did you do something righteous today that you keep for yourself for the day of judgment did you read something new from quran that made that that gave you some insight that you can share with me can we use this 5 minute break that i had at work to 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 remember allah azza wa jalla together did we ever think about this type of relationship brothers and sisters just think about it what type of conversation do we have with our with our wives it's all about materialistic life it's all about food and children and maybe some 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 <clears throat> some of those bills that we have to pay brothers and sisters we have to 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 think way beyond beyond what we have in in the current time brothers and sisters another tip that we have or that you may think about is in fact if you really have something to do 
with, with your friends at the masjid? Why can't you think about the same with your wife? Can you make a competition between you and your wife in memorizing Quran? Can you make a competition with your wife on who will spend more for the sake of Allah? Can you read a, a, a book, in, an Islamic book that teaches you more about Islam and, and she does the same and then you share what, what you learned? Can you start your own halaqa at home? Brothers and sisters, think about this. Halaqas should not be only in the masjid. You can make halaqa at home. You can have a halqa in which you, your wife and children only attend that. Did we think about this? Having a halqa, halqa where you sit with your wife, your children, and you read one hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, from Sahih Muslim, from Riyadh al-Salihin, and, and, and just contemplate on it. Half an hour per week, just to have this relationship where you feel that your wife is indeed, is indeed in your path to Allah Azza wa Jal. Brothers and sisters, it is very sad. It's really very sad that our most happy times are those times when we are outside our homes. It's really sad. When the home itself is supposed to be your most happy place. It's very sad that our children are not able to see us implementing Islam at home, let alone outside our homes. Brothers and sisters, a another tip to have is actually think about your wife as a person that if, if she becomes better, then the whole house, the whole family becomes better. The, the, the most obvious impact that your wife has if she becomes, if she improves, is on your children. Don't you like your children to be the best? Brothers and sisters, if you want to invest in something, the best investment would be in your wife. We always think about opportunities where we can invest our wealth, our effort, our expertise. Brothers and sisters, if you really want to invest in a place, it's your wife. Because if you invest there, you will get all the fruit. You, your children, and they will be the ones who will carry your legacy afterwards. And they will have another great home when you pass away. Brothers and sisters, I wish we can think about our relationship as how a father can set an example for his children and for all people. Brothers and sisters, think about you when you meet Allah Azza wa Jal, when you are under the ground, when you are in your grave, in an authentic hadith, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said Turfa'u lil mu'mini darajatuhu fi qabri That while a person, while a believer is in his grave His level gets escalated Fayaqulu ay rabbi Ayyu shay'in hadha he would say, oh Allah, what is this for? I know my level. What happened now after I died, that my level has been escalated, have been elevated. فَيُقَالُ لَهُ وَلَدُكَ ذَكَرَكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَكَ That your child remembered you in his dua and he made a istighfar for you. Brothers and sisters, your investment with your wives, in your wives, is a reason not only to please her, not only to improve her, but more importantly, and as importantly, to improve your children and to have this legacy for you that inshallah will continue to pray for you until the day of judgment. 
When you set the example, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you the reward. For everyone who copied you, for everyone who imitated you, for everyone who carried your teaching and went forward. اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم يا رحمن يا رحيم يا قيوم السماوات والأرضين أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا اللهم يا ربنا وفقنا لأن نكون أزواجا صالحين اللهم وفقنا لأن نكون أزواج صالحين اللهم وفقنا لأن نكون أزواج صالحين اللهم يا ربنا خذ بأيدينا إلى الحق اللهم يا ربنا خذ بأيدينا إلى الحق اللهم إنا نعوذ بك نعوذ بك يا ربنا من الشيطان ومن وساوسه نعوذ بك يا رحمن يا رحيم من أن نغضب لأنفسنا نعوذ بك يا رحمن يا رحيم من أن أغضب لأنفسنا نعوذ بك يا رحمن يا رحيم من أن ننتصر لأنفسنا ونجهل على الناس يا رحمن يا رحيم يا قيوم السماوات والأرضين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة